this is a, a session to talk about streaming as in uh, playing the whole game over the internet, uh, not streaming as in YouTube or Twitch. Um, uh, but um, anyway, so this is a, a session called Making Games in a Streaming First World. Uh, and I want to focus as much as possible on what that means creatively for games um, as this uh, streaming uh, uh, technology takes hold and as it starts to change the way we discover games and play games. Uh, so let me just take my clicker and move on to the next. Um, so this is, uh, you know, if you're not up to speed, these are some headlines from this summer. Um, uh, Ubisoft believes next gen is the last for consoles as Microsoft looks beyond uh, uh, you know, console platforms. Um, EA says cloud game streaming is a matter of when rather than if, um, and so on. Um, and uh, this has um, sparked a lot of discussion and a lot of questions. Um, first one is, okay, so what is cloud gaming? What does that mean? Um, I think uh, the journalist Keza McDonald probably um, summed it up best. She wrote an article uh, in the summer, um, so shortly after E3. Um, uh, uh, where she, um, you know, g gets into this uh, topic that seemed to be on the minds of everyone she spoke to. One concept kept coming up, streaming, whether it was Microsoft, Bethesda, Ubisoft, uh, EA, everyone wanted to talk about the idea of cloud tech powered and even Netflix style subscriptions that let you play games on any device. Um, so I think that is cloud gaming in a nutshell, um, playing a game on any device. Uh, I like to show headlines. I, I work in communications, so I, I, I read the media, so there's lots of headlines here. Um, uh, <coughs> these are some headlines from two years ago. Uh, and this is when the company that I work for, Hatch, um, uh, first spun out of Rovio. Um, we um, made a, a big announcement at Slush, which is a conference, a tech conference in Helsinki. Uh, and uh, um, a lot of people wrote about us then and continue to write about us uh, now, but I'm just putting this here because we've been working on this cloud gaming uh, for two years as, as a separate standalone company, and before that, going back several years inside Rovio as, uh, as a research project within Rovio. Um, spun out two years ago as it became clear that there was a business case here and we should um, pursue this um, as a standalone company. Um, since then, we have, um, reached out and we're working with uh, 100 plus partner developers and publishers uh, from some very established, uh, you know, heavyweights of the industry to, you know, mid-sized indie studios to very small indie teams. Um, we are really working on curating a, uh, a very nice premium content stream for our cloud gaming service. Um, and uh, so when we, we started this, you know, the user experience has been foremost in, uh, in our minds as, we, as we've been developing the product, as we've been developing the service. Um, and uh, I'm just gonna show you a short video which shows us pretty much where we are at now with our streaming product. Um, this is a open beta early access uh, product that is available on Android phones in 18 countries in Europe. Uh, so let's um, let me just show you this. It's about 30 seconds. It just shows you the, the, the user interface, uh, what the experience is like, Hopes, hopefully gives you an idea of what we're all about. Okay, so as you can see, it's a, uh, um, it, it's a service where you go on and you, you kind of surf the content flow. Um, you see uh, a game you like. Uh, you know, when you, when you uh, find the game you like, you just press play to play and you immediately start playing with no downloading, um, you know, no applications to manage, no fuss. You're not worrying about how much space you have on your phone. You just press play to play and uh, you've got this instant gaming experience. Um, and uh, so now um, 
the first question when we, now we're talking about hosting games in a remote data center and then streaming them over to uh, another device, um, you know, the, the, the local device. Uh, and the first question is, um, how is the latency? Uh, you know, can I only play chess this way or can I play, you know, like a real arcade action game? And, you know, to answer this question, this is Chameleon Run. This is one of our games uh, published by Noodle Cake. Um, and uh, yeah, you can play Chameleon Run on Hatch. It's not a problem. Um, so, uh, you, know, you know, the first question, yes, you can play, you know, fast moving arcade games streaming over the internet, um, not an issue. Uh, secondly, um, bandwidth consumption, probably our, probably, uh, our, uh, our most asked question from our users is how much data does this consume? Uh, is this gonna kill my data plan? Uh, answer is no, it won't. Um, if you can stream HD video, we are, um, depending on the game, this is the average, but on average we are um, a little bit less than half the uh, bandwidth requirement for HD video. Um, and you know, this sort of always on connectivity is only getting better. Uh, and in Finland it's already not an issue because in Finland you can't buy, um, you can't even buy a cap data plan. Um, we're a Finnish company by the way. Uh, okay, and now this is the big question. Um, so, uh, you know, how we make money is, you know, it's a, it's a uh, you know, our, what we're doing is, um, you know, offering a, a mix of advertising and paid subscription revenue. Uh, and uh, the revenue is shared um, uh, uh, proportionally according to your share of overall gameplay minutes in the service. Uh, so that means, you know, we're measuring success with gameplay minutes. And this is, you know, basically the fairest way we could, we could think of sharing the revenue. And, um, uh, you know, and there's other services out there that are also following the same model. Um, so the number one question when we started, well, what does this mean creatively? Uh, will games that have loads and loads of content or that are designed to be played forever with endless loops, um, you know, are these types of games going to dominate over these shorter premium bespoke experiences that might not last very long, but they, but they nonetheless have an audience? Um, and well, I mean, the short answer is no. Um, in fact, you know, the shorter games on the platform are doing better. Um, and I think, you know, when you answer this question, first you need to ask yourself, what is the value of a subscription-based service? What is the value of subscribing to a service such as Hatch, where you know you have a menu of games to play, all you can play, as much as you like, um, and the value is well. I mean, I think our what we've learned from our users so far. Uh, I mentioned we've been in this open beta, um, and uh, this is what we've. One of the key things we've picked up is that you know the the typical Hatch engaged user is playing seven games a month. Now, do you think um, you know, that user is coming to Hatch to play one game over and over again? No, they're coming for a variety of experiences. They are coming for um, you know, lots of different content. They're looking for all killer, no filler, a game they can finish. And sure enough, um, here is uh, here's a glance at our charts. Um, I just pulled this data uh, this morning. Um, and uh, you know, last seven days, uh, our most played game is Angry Birds. That's because we have an Angry Birds challenge going on right now, live on the service, um, where users uh, you know, can compete on high score. Um, and uh, second most played game, Monument Valley, Hitman Go, and so on. Um, now these are all games, with a few exceptions, uh, that have less than seven hours of main gameplay content. Monument Valley, about 90 minutes. Hitman Go, about five hours. Um, and, um, uh, you know, basically these are short, completable games. Um, and uh, this, I think, is very interesting. Um, this, this kind of, like, is not necessarily the, the performance and data we were expecting. Um, although, although, you know, we did wonder, you know, like, and, uh, and, I, and I think this goes to show that, um, you know, I mean, I mean, if you think about, you know, what is the point of subscribing to a service? It's not to play that one game that you're addicted to. It's to try out a different. It's to try out lots of different experiences, short ones that you can finish and move on to the next great thing. Uh, so, 
Um, I mean, we're getting kind of close a little bit to, uh, uh, you know, some, some tentative conclusion here. Um, and I mean, so, you know, what you're normally used to, especially on mobile, when you, uh, you know, make a game, uh, you know, uh, especially if you're going free to play, um, the key is to have a very, very long retention pe curve and have people playing the game for a very long time. And typically that's how you, you know, how the game performs and how the game makes money is, um, uh, you know, you, 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 you get a small number of players playing the game for a very long, long time. Um, whereas when you have this kind of sort of subscription-based setup, um, actually the logic is kind of works the other way around. You want something short, completable, and that's uh, actually what people will play, what people will finish, and that's where the gameplay minutes go to. Um, now there are a couple of exceptions. Um, most notably, we have a game called Crashlands, which is a very deep crafting RPG, about 50 hours of main story content, and then in theory you can keep on playing forever after that. Uh, and there's a small number of users that are really playing that a lot, and, uh, and they, they consistently drive that into our top 10, depending on the week. Um, we'll probably see it again this week because it's fe featured in a space room that we have uh, in the service, uh, which is uh, you know part of our participation in UN's World Space Week this week. So <laughs> anyway. Um, and uh, anyway, but so what, so you know, uh, uh, first conclusion so far is that, you know, cloud gaming, when, you know, it is used to, uh, uh, um, um, you know, w when you're using the power of the cloud to, to um, provide a, uh, an instant play uh, experience, that enables the subscription model, that enables that instant play, I want to try this, I want to try this, and play it now, I don't want to download it, I don't want to manage it, I don't want to, um, th this, this, um, that's kind of like the key enabler of, of establishing, you know, the, the subscription uh, economy, you know, model um, for, for con consuming, consuming content uh, via subscription. Uh, and that offers a pathway for these short premium games back to, um, back to mobile. Um, as we know, I don't think anyone in this room needs me to explain, um, uh, you know, premium market on mobile is, is quite small. Um, and especially on Android, it's, um, it's not really there at all. Um, and this is a way, uh, this is a way back to mobile, I think, for, for, for some publishers. Um, but what else? Um, so a little bit about how the technology works. Um, so, you know, when you're playing games in the cloud, you know, you're streaming one game instance to a device. You could just as easily stream the same exact game instance to a second device or a third device or a fourth device and so on. Um, and what this does is drastically uh, simplify uh, online multiplayer. Um, so if you've made a local multiplayer game, a lot of your users are, are giving you feedback. When can I have online multiplayer? When can I have online matchmaking? Um, that is usually a typically very expensive proposition. Um, you know, you have to invest in a, in a multiplayer backend and, and some network programming and so on. Uh, but, uh, you know, in our setup, basically, if you can make a local multiplayer game, you can also make an online multiplayer game because your controllers uh, uh, are just, um, instead of being in the same living room, they're just on different phones. Um, and they can be miles apart, not a problem. So, uh, okay. And um, secondly, um, you know, and this is where it gets really interesting, is that, you know, right now Hatch is being tested in a 4G and Wi-Fi environment. And we're really pushing, you know, just how far the Hatch experience can go in that kind of connected environment. Um, but, uh, you know, 5G cloud gaming is just down the road, just around the corner. Um, it's already being tested in Finland, and uh, it's, um, you know, the first major rollouts are, are due next year, early next year. Um, and this uh, means, you know, games can really be freed from CPU limitations on local devices. You can run a really big, really heavy game server side, and then, you know, with the low latencies enabled by 5G networks, you could, you know, stream the whole thing to any screen. Um, uh, and that's really exciting because then, you know, you could have really deep, really powerful games, really big multiplayer games, um, you know, that, that, you know, that would be console level quality, um, just going over to phones, TVs, whatever. So, 
Uh, and you know, I think this really opens the door for new opportunities for creative and collaborative and social gaming experiences um, that uh, just haven't been possible before. Um, and, and I think it really changes the conversation completely about not only how you implement online multiplayer, but how many publishers can now get into that, how many developers can now get into that space, um, and the new things you can do when you know you don't, you can actually play in real time with you know extremely low latency, uh, you know arcade style gaming together simultaneously. You don't have to do turn based, although there's nothing stopping you from continuing to do turn based or. Um, you know, I've, I've seen, uh, there was a very interesting game I saw on the floor earlier that was uh, um, an online multiplayer turn-based soccer game. Um, and, and, uh, and, you know, that, that you could do that very easily over Hatch with just one game instance, or you could also, you know, have, you know, real, you know, fluid dynamics, real live, you know, soccer as well. You really need to um, uh, go, go in that. So, but anyway, um, I think now to make this session as useful for you as possible, and now I just want to open up the floor and you can ask me anything. Um, I've been kind of running through the particulars awfully quickly here. Um, so I think now is the time, if you miss something or if you have extra questions, tell me now. So the question was, uh, how are games, like what's the porting requirements to go to Hatch, is that right? Yes. Um, yeah, so we are on Hatch. We are running um, a garden variety APK on our data center, um, and and that APK has been um, optimized for streaming. But um, you know, usually that that requires very little modifications from the developer. So usually porting is like uh, a game could be developed like regularly for mobile and then. Port. That's right. Yeah, and in fact, you know, you see some of the games on our service already there. You know, there are existing mobile games that are distributed on, you know, via other channels as well. And, and we've just taken them and, and, and put them on Hatch as well. Do you work, uh, do you usually do the porting or does the developer do the porting with your uh, The developer will do the porting. Um, uh, of course, you know, there are some cases where, um, it, you know, like, um, you know, say we're looking at a PC game and we want to take that to mobile via Hatch. Um, you know, then we would, then we would take a more active role in the porting there. But, but, um, and especially since it's a brand new platform, and you know, um, you know, we're, we're, you know, we share the risk in some of those cases. Uh, you mentioned that it's now in uh, beta, open beta, in 18 countries. That's right. Yeah. Is Serbia one of them? I'm afraid Serbia is not one. Of oh them. my God. Okay, that's going yeah. to have to change. And, and I may, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk to the guys when I get back to the office because. Um, I've been demoing Hatch uh, just over 4G network here, and it works fine. So, um, I mean, the game okay. is running in Amsterdam. So it's quite a long way for a game to travel, but it seems to work okay. So, okay, hey, anyway. great. You have a person already ready to test the game. I went to your website and uh, uh, applied the number in the queue. Ah, okay. So whenever you and I'm streamer, I'm streaming in Serbia. So, I will be really interested to try the Hatch and see how it fares uh, to the PC, because I stream on PC most of the time. I mean, okay. all the time. All right, well, I, okay. So y you said basically, you know, we have the thought that's making games for streaming first. Yeah. Well, so what if someone, for example, wants to create a game targeted for, you know, streaming, what are the yeah. things that we should pay attention so to? So I think it's not just about streaming. It's about uh, what kind of, I mean, in Hatch's case, it's not just you know making a game for streaming; it's making a game for a Hatch user. So you know we're thinking holistically: what is the Hatch experience? Um, and you know our users expect a certain type of game, a certain level of quality. Um, you know, or, or you know maybe they like certain genres or or whatever. Um, and you know, so we're looking for a game that can fit comfortably into you know the Hatch experience. And you know, as we can see um, so far, that typically means games that are kind of on the shorter side, the kind of the completable games, although there are exceptions. Um, uh, and uh, and you know, and we're also looking for games, you know, that could help us, you know, reach very, you know, a broad audience. Um, and uh, um, you know, so and and really, like, how does this game fit into a user's, you know, a typical user's uh, subscription experience? You know, is this going to be one of those seven games that they play? Uh, and and that's kind of what we're thinking about. Um, and and so you know, to the extent that you know, if you're making a game, 
you know, especially for a particular platform, have that conversation with the platform holder uh, and really work together on, on you know, identifying the audience and, and, and making an experience that fits in with that bigger experience. Yeah, well, we, uh, yeah. you know, you mentioned a few times, like, similar to Netflix. So do you think, taking a page from them, uh, like, episode-based games, do you think that they would do well? I think episodic content is really interesting. Do you have um, some on that? Well, we have, we have a couple of uh, point-and-click adventure games that originally were distributed on an episodic basis. Like, for example, we have this game uh, called The Lion Song, um, made by a Viennese developer, Mipumi. Uh, and that was originally distributed one episode at a time. When it came to Hatch, we, they, we just put everything all together in one package so people could binge play it. Um, but, uh, I mean, you know, in principle, that sounds very interesting and, and definitely, you know, would, would obviously add value to a subscription. And yeah. mm. um, last yeah. question, mm -hmm. how long before we see this on PC on this caliber? Uh, well, it's, it's hard, to, hard to say. I mean, but you know, the ultimate promise of cloud gaming is that it goes to any screen. So, um, and you know, we've always said that openly, um, you know, we're starting on mobile, but we, are, we're, we want to take this to other platforms as well. Um, uh, you know, and, and um, so give it time. So you mentioned that uh, <laughs> depending on the game, uh, the bandwidth needs to be between 1.2 and 2 megabits. Uh, what depends about the game? What's the difference between, yeah. let's say, Crisis and Angry Birds? Yeah, okay, so um, uh, oftentimes people will make the conclusion that a game with really big, fancy graphics uh, is a game that's going to be high bandwidth. Um, not necessarily, it's just a matter of optimizing the code. Um, uh, uh, that, that's sort of the way our streaming tech works. We're not streaming video f uh, frames. We're streaming, um, we're streaming uh, commands. Um, well, is, so there, is there a limitation? Like, what's the, you know, uh, what, what's the most complex game that can be streamed? I don't know. Is, is there some kind of... That's a very interesting question. Um, is it uh, because of the control latency or something like that? Uh, okay, so, so um, what's happening when a game is streaming on Hatch? So when we... Um, so to, to kind of back up a bit, when you um, when you uh, uh, you know decide to put a game in the cloud, you're up against uh, multiple sources of latency. So uh, the first one is you know latency in the network itself, um, the network topology, if, if you will, um, and the second one is you know the size of the data stream and input stream that you have to contend with. Um, and the most so so the more you can and you know and you can control you can control the data stream and the input stream but it, it's a much harder to control obviously the surrounding network external environment um, so to the extent that you can control the data stream uh, uh, the, the 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 much more control you have over over how how uh, how smooth the gameplay experience is um, and so that's where our streaming tech comes in um, where we you know have radically optimized the um, the the uh, the streaming um, in in a nutshell I mean I don't want to really get too deep into it here but in a nutshell um, we're running the CPU server side and we rely on the device's own GPU units to um, to draw the game as, as it's being as it's being played and also of course collecting the input stream so there is some kind of minimal requirement on telephone side like you can't use any device from 2012 and stream it uh, yeah, okay, yeah. So right now Hatch supports uh, Android 6 and up, um, and there's a couple devices that, that just won't work, um, uh, you know, older devices, but yeah. Thank you very much. Please, a big round of applause.